Hello, community groups. The scripture for today is found in Luke chapter 14, verses 25 through 33, and it reads, Large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and turning to them, he said, If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying, This person began to build and wasn't able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Won't he first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, those of you who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciple. You know, in our day and age, churches tend to judge their success based upon the ABCs of church growth, attendance, building, and cash. The goal of every church is to be the mega church because deep down we think that that is what success looks like. Now, don't mishear me. It is not inherently bad to have a big church. After all, 3,000 were baptized in one day in Acts chapter 2, and that was a pretty big church gathering. What I am saying is that in our goal to get more people to believe and to accept Jesus, many times we forget to help them count the cost of what it means to be a follower of His. Some call it easy believism. Dietrich Bonhoeffer calls it cheap grace. It is basically presenting Christianity without the cross or all the benefits of being a Christian without talking about any of the demands that the decision has on our life. Jesus had large crowds following him. You know, I wonder, I wonder if he, he ever was tempted to simply tell them what they wanted to hear or continue to wow them uh, with food and miracles in order to keep the large crowds happy and entertained. What we learn from this text is that salvation is free, but it's not cheap. Grace has been freely given to us, but it will cost us our very lives. So if you were, think, uh, if you were talking to a person that may be thinking about becoming a Christian, how would you help them count the cost? How would you explain the call to pick up their cross daily and to follow Jesus without inadvertently falling into works-based righteousness or legalism? These questions are some of the things I would love for you to discuss in your group today. Be blessed.